After arrest and before trial comes jail. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Another night in the streets, another night in this hell. I've been kicking the trip and the cops is me in jail. And my fingers are ink, they got my head on the lights. Dear Lord, please get me out of this jail tonight. Give me out, just give me out. This is uh, the downtown jail in Fort Myers, Florida. This is maximum security inmates, murderers, shoplifters, kidnappers, everyone like that. Any given night, we have close to 700 inmates here. Uh, we're going out to Salad Court to get a disorderly from Lee County. My boy, Deputy Ellis. Okay, Ellis. Is this you? What's up, man? Domestic battery, then he has occupied burglary, and then three separate batteries. So, he's pretty intoxicated. Uh, not just mouthing off. He's been trying to kick the windows and stuff. Okay. Come on out, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm no killer. I don't sell crack. Don't shock me. Look at me, man. I'm gonna Look help at me, you man. out. Boom. Don't shock me. I ain't got no dope on me. I ain't reacting. Look at me. Yeah, I ain't doing nothing. Just take me, man. Put me in the shower and get this face off me, man. Yeah, come get me. Yeah, yeah, you hear me? I ain't no killer, dude. I ain't no killer. Listen, I'm so listen, that, listen. Dude. Just please put listen. me in the shower, dude. Get off me, dude. You aren't listening to me I, since you're talking. I'll stop. It's, there you go. I don't need anything out of you till we're done. Just please put me in the shower, man. Please. Man, dude. Uh, uh, along with the mother, dude. That's need cool, to be, man. You need to quit with that language. I will, man. So what, dude? I live with these. Stop. Dirt, dude. That's I just stopped by your house, dude. Okay. Stop. Another can sitting right in your face. You need to stop. That's awesome. I'll stop. Hey, shut your mouth. He starts yelling racial slurs in front of them. He can decide everybody else to go off. And we don't need that. We need to control the inmates. We need to calm down the situation. Stop. Oh, oh. Put it in a wrapper. Oh, thank you. Thank you even more. You need to stop. I will stop, man. Just put me in the water, dude. Sure, well. Watch your hands. Oh, thank Right now he's in for domestic violence along with three other additional battery charges. He uh, attempted to kick out the cruiser windows. He attempted to uh, flee once they got in there to try and control him in the back seat. So he was definitely given the road a handful and he came in and tried to continue from there. As you see, he was uh, yelling racial slurs at this point in time in the housing area, trying to disrupt and incite everyone else and get them to stand up and try and draw attention away from himself. He also started pulling away from Officer Amoroso. At that time is when we applied the OC spray to try and get him back under control. Hang on, something. hold the door. This kid's been coming in here the last couple of years on uh, juvenile charges for drug possession. Why are you trying to fall back, man? Keep walking. He turned 18, so this isn't the juvenile side no more. This is male, adult, jail. Take a right, right into this cell. Put your knees on this bench and lean forward. Knees on the bench. Knees on the bench, dude. Come on. What? He's got a broken arm. My shoulder against the wall, man. Nobody throw your shoulder against the You're wall. You're pushing my shoulder. I've been pushing your shoulder. I'm Listen to me, man. There's three bars inside my shoulder, and you're pushing it against the concrete. 
Is that better? Yeah, that is better. Careful. Did you have a nurse come and check him out? Not yet. Good job. Have the inside. nurse come and check him out before you take his cuff so. Ten poor ma'am. Can you 56 1 East? We're in 1D7. Check on a new 1015, please. Take my yep. Yeah, we're gonna take your hoodie. We're not at daycare, man. This ain't no joke. This is jail. No, so. listen, this is cruelty. I'm gonna file a complaint. Go ahead. Oh, my shoulder against the wall, man. I just had surgery two days ago, man. Then what are you doing out at one o'clock in the morning? I wasn't out at one o'clock in the morning. What's going with your arm? I got three different sets of stitches with three brackets in my arm. Sit down. Are you gonna bond out? What's up? Are you gonna bond out? He, either he's gonna release his mommy and daddy, or he's going to DJJ. I can't Is this a juvenile thing? I can't. He's an adult DJJ. here on juvenile charges. He violated his juvenile probation, is what he did. My that was not nice. You can go to DJ. They still take you to DJ. Oh, yeah, you can still go to DJ, like right? This? Yes, yeah. sir, absolutely. They told me they couldn't. Well, they oh, lied somebody to you. lied to you. The police, the officers, well, they, they lied. lied. It happens all the time. Don't feel bad. They got you. You're so mischievous. You were so sick. You should have been being hated. Someone has to get a hold of my dad and let him know. You will get a chance to use the phone. Don't worry. Hey, this, man. Ain't the, this ain't the juvenile sides. I know that, but you my get, dad hey, has no idea. In six hours, you can use this phone. Have a good night. Sit down. This is just the thing. This kid needs to change his life and realize that this isn't the juvenile side no more. This is a place where you can get beat up and stabbed. And, you know, this ain't DJJ. This is a big time. Jail's not a fun place to be. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. in the jail now for uh, three years. We're trained mostly to deal with our hands and uh, verbally how to deal with people because we don't have the tools that the patrol officers have as far as tasers and our weapons. Hi. Come stand over here. Where were you at tonight dressed up so fancy? I was getting married. Oh. What did you dress you for, do you know? I already paid the bill and I gave him a 90% tip. Drop your hands onto your sides. I need to get this ring off. Wow, yes you do. Yeah, I've been trying to tell them for hours. Is it always like it that? No, it's a brand new ring. Ow, please don't touch my finger. Really do you break your finger? No. Just the ring got swollen after I started stressing out. My blood pressure's probably through the roof and I can't get it off. I kind of need to go to the hospital rather than stand here and waste time. Well, actually, we cut them off here. Let's see what the nurse says. Maybe she can give her some medication and take down the swelling first, all right? Just bought it today. I wonder what she's arrested for. Let's see. Did you guys bring in a prom queen? What did you arrest her for? She's frauding an innkeeper over $250 of felony. They ordered, like, they went into a restaurant and ordered, like, $650 worth of food. No check, credit card, debit card, cash. She walked up and was like, oh, I'm going to go to grab my, uh, go back to my hotel room and grab the money. Like an hour went by, they found her in the casino. Gambling? Yeah, basically hanging out and then took him into custody. They got nothing on him, not even a dime. No. Yeah, she said she was about to get married tonight. They supposedly <laughs> knew each other, met again last night in, in Vegas, and now they're getting married. Today. Not anymore. Or tonight, not anymore. Not for the next couple of days, at least. All <laughs> right, thanks. All right, so we're going to get some ring cutters. We actually have those here because it is a common thing to take rings off in here. We usually take rings from inmates that are um, 
big and bulky big diamonds because if they do get into an altercation, it leaves uh, good damage on the uh, victim of the altercation. I thought he still had some cash, and if he didn't have cash, that he may have had an ATM card or whatever. I had no idea the bill was going to come to $600. We got one meal to share and an appetizer. Okay, let me go ahead. Let me see. I'm going to cut on the purple, okay? Yeah. Understand it's going to hurt because I'm going to have to put the thing underneath the ring, okay? Okay. Alright, ready? Mm -hmm. oh. Need a break? Tell me if you need a break. those other rings off. Here we go again. We got lots of jewelry coming, just so you know, and I gotta try to get some rings off. We're gonna see if the lotion will get your um, rings off. Let's do the easy hand first. Mm. Oh. Stop. It's coming. It's almost there. Just gotta get over the knuckle. There's one. We have about four more coming, maybe. That hand still hurts. There's no way. Sorry. I don't know how I could possibly hurt anyone with that. How many rings do you have on that finger? Three. Three uh, rings riding on the finger that are going to stay for now. I'm sorry? Are you working? I own a company. How long have you been self-employed? Mm. About four months. Uh, how much do you pay yourself? I don't know. I just dropped 500 grand in the last 48 hours. Give me, that's how much you paid yourself? $48,000? 500000 Okay, you paid yourself a half a million dollars a week. So because of her amount of income, she will actually uh, need to bail herself out. Seeing as how she didn't have any credit cards on or any cash, she'll be staying in our custody, and that'll be her life for the next couple hours. I've been with the department here at San Francisco County Jail for seven years. I work in the intake position. It's probably one of the more dangerous positions here because these guys coming in, these fresh arrestees, you know, they're, they're drunk, they're under the influence of controlled substance and whatnot, and you know, you can never let your guard down. You got guys coming in with horrendous crimes. You know, some guys are coming in with just simple crimes, but the bottom line is, you know, I gotta treat everybody the same, get them talking, and build some kind of rapport with them. It's a dangerous spot, and you gotta be on your toes. And you say you discharged or you still on parole? I'm on parole. You're on parole? What did you use today? Are you on the influence no, or anything? No, sir. You sure? I swear to God. Okay. I can test clean for everything. All right. Had a few beers, but you know, I'm a five day. You you're, you're a little bit animated right now. You know now. how I do that. Yeah. Just a couple beers or like a few? That's it. 40 I'm ounces. Cool. No, I'm good. I'm totally sober. Just kind of drove how come I'm here. He's been here in the past. He is a parolee. And you get all your you get you got all your t your tats in prison, right? Yeah. All right. It's got a few white pride tats because you run with the woods, right? Yeah. All right. But you get along with everybody else, you're not, you're not gonna have any problems no, in the inner good cool. I'm all right. I'm on my best behavior. <laughs> Give me something. All right. You get a new, you get a bill to clean yourself. Yeah. All right. Grab a seat out there. 
He's back in custody. Um, looks like he's got fresh charges. Uh, same thing as last time, 422 PC, which is criminal threats of violence, and uh, 136.1A, which is to prevent or dissuade a witness. His world basically is, is prison, is state prison. And from the looks of it, every time he gets out, he goes right back in. And it's always some type of resisting arrest or threat. The, his parole officer finally violated him this time, so that history that he has with violence uh, comes back to haunt him. Take your pulse? Yes, ma'am. Put your finger in here. He's considered uh, a shot caller, which means that with the whites, he's considered one of the leaders. He gets drugs organized and running throughout the facility. And uh, guys like that, we have to keep them under wraps so we can watch them. But I got a lot of racial on oh, me. You know what I mean? Pretty high power. I mean, it comes with a reason. Prison's not like it used to be. Now they'll put anybody in there. You know, there's people that don't know no about it. They get in wrecks all day long, but we try to take them and make them into, you know, something solid instead of letting them go to But where I come from, I'm up at the top level. Don't get no worse or. You got level one, which is a medium threat, level two, and it, get, and it just accelerates. Level four is the highest you can get. And those are usually the guys who are, are violent. You can just look at his arms and tell what kind of criminal or a convict he is. I mean, all of his tats are earned one way or another, whether it's assaulting an inmate or trying to assault the prison guard. He's the kind of guy that you don't want to turn your back on and you don't trust anything he tells you. He's a career criminal and uh, he's dangerous. These guys come in, they got the swastika on, they got the white power. You know, I don't take it personal. I mean, it's, it's just part of the job. And my job is to try to communicate with these guys and get information. And regardless of what their beliefs are, you know, I, I still got to do my job. Joseph, have you been here before? Huh? Have you been here before? Yeah, yeah. Travis, uh, you know, we can go ahead and see. <laughs> he was smoking marijuana all day. According to this, 15 to 20 blunts, which is a lot of weed. Yeah, did, did you drink too? No. Nope. Smoke Just smoked all day? Yeah. You smoke every day? Yep. 15, 20 blunts a day. Every day. So how old were you when you first started smoking? 27. 27? Yeah, I'm a late bloomer. I guess all so. My, all my other friends that I know have been like, four years old, seven, ten. And you just hooked, huh? Yeah. I'm like like bigger pie head than they are. OK. You got a job? No. So how do you get your money to smoke all day? SSI. SSI? Uh, SSA, and then I borrow money sometimes. Come on over here, and I'll ask you some medical questions. <laughs> are you on the doctor's care for anything? Uh, I, 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 mental pills. Mental pills? So yeah, you have some I psych problems? Yeah, I don't. I have do you see a doctor regularly? You know, every, no. I mean, you ever had the thought of suicide? Yes, yeah, sometimes. All right. Do you feel suicidal right now? No. All right. All right. We'll get him cleared through medical since he came in under the influence. He's been smoking all day long, smoking weed, and uh, he's on mom's leg about more money so he can go get some more weed. And he started getting a little violent. We didn't really have anything to hook him for as far as felony goes, so we just pick him up for public intoxication, and uh, he gets to hang out with us for a few hours. He's here just for public intoxication. We're gonna let him sober up, come down off the weed a little bit. Are you under the influence of any drugs right now? Mm, marijuana. Okay, what about meth? No. Okay. His, his heart rate's really not bad at all. It's very slow, 62, so he probably isn't under the influence of meth. So this smoke weed, like, I mean, people don't, like, like, look, I smoke weed this, like, if I had a quarter pound and everything's going cool and I'm listening to my music, I'll show you sit there and smoke two or three ounces in one day. Are you ready to get this process going so you can get yeah, out of here? Yeah, where you going to go? I didn't know if you were ready. Where are we go? Right there to the red door. Right there? Yeah, hold on. I'm 
Sometimes you go and go to bed probably. Maybe smoke one. They probably go to bed mainly. I'm not tired. He's just a loser. He just sits around all day smoking weed and, and begging for money. He'll walk back home to mom and dad's and uh, probably start all over again tomorrow. I've been here at Central Booking for the last five years. In general, the number of people that come in here under the influence of alcohol, I would say 90%. Alcohol is not a discriminator. It affects the old, it, it affects the young. People who are educated, people who aren't educated. Oh, that's exactly how y'all do it. Hey, what's up? What's up, man? Oh, I hey, remember this punk. Police brutality. Hey, 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 hey. On the wrist wall. Hey, beat my ass. No, beat my ass. Police brutality. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. Watch it. Whoa, whoa. Hey, police brutality. Police brutality. Come on. Let me have the guts. Let me have the guts. Hey. Stop resisting now, okay? Relax. Don't move. Don't move now. You were talking to me, and then what happened? I don't know. What happened? What'd you take tonight, brother? I did. Xanax. We were told it was Xanax, and all of a sudden, yeah, I do worry about him. So, stop, 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 the biggest problem we have here in Travis County with the younger generation is they like to take prescription drugs now. That's the, that's the hey. drug of choice. So they take these Xanax, drink a lot, go out partying, and we find them in that condition right there, unable to take care of themselves. I'm sober, y'all. <laughs> you're only gonna be here for a matter of hours and you're gonna go home on your own without doing anything. Yeah. You go, sir. <laughs> Thank you. What do you do? He's an assistant principal. High school, or principal. High school principal, okay. He's a principal from out of town. He's telling us that a watch was taken from his hotel room. Right now, he's a little irate. This gentleman came to us tonight on a um, public intoxication. It's another alcohol-related incident. Spread your legs, please, sir. <sighs> Keep him on the counter. Thank you. He's trying nothing to help us there, but muscles do, right? and hard work. There's nothing in there. Well, we, we check everyone. It's not just you, man, not just you. <laughs> I was trying to buy my watch in my, in my wallet. <laughs> Settle down because you're too angry. You're not listening. It's not. It's not. No, I'm not angry. I just want to be. You're, yeah, you are. You're highly upset, and that's understandable. But you need to calm no, you down a little bit so you can listen and understand what we're saying. Nope. All right. Let's paper towel. Take, take that ink off. You don't want to worry about that. Okay. You gotta go see the nurse. Why? I got TB now. Wait, Come on. The blue line. I got other people to do over here. Line. Follow that blue line. Oh, sir, yes, sir. Corner. Have a seat. Yes, sir. Which seat, sir? The blue seat. Which blue seat, sir? Whichever one you want. You you decide, sir. Sir. You need to chill out, okay? Because I don't want to do this. I pride myself on being able to talk to people, but you're making this go the this wrong way. This is not talking. This is uh, enforcement. I know about talking. Okay, cool. I do well, it then, all the time. Then you, if you sit there. Let go of my finger, and we'll talk. Okay. Well, you need to chill, okay? Dude, you got a ticket. You'll be out of here this morning after you sober up. You came down, had a good time? No, sir. You came down? No, sir. I came down and was looking for my watch in my hotel room on my floor, and I got arrested. I take it they asked him to stay in his room? I asked him. He didn't. He came want down to the lobby while I was talking to him. Came down the lobby, didn't touch anybody or do anything. No, sir. They gave Here, go ahead. Good meeting. Put my fingers again. No, go ahead. Excuse me. I want you to calm down. I'm a hospital principal, sir. I do what you do every day. Okay. I just want to take a food. Okay, I'm a criminal. 
Back. Well, we appreciate your work, man, but right now we're here to help you, okay? Believe it or not, this is for your own good, okay? I believe you. Okay? Just, I believe you right now. Just the chill. The person I believe now is you. Cool. You'll keep me with my job if I don't get your... Dude, this is like a ticket. You don't even have to tell them, and you'll still be a good person once you're sober. Just chill. You can, come on in. I want you to sit in here, chill out a little bit, okay? I'm gonna look at you just a little bit longer, make sure that you're okay. I know you're a little upset right now, but once you calm down just a little bit, let this awesome police officer get out of here. Now take it easy, okay? This is not gonna be on your record. This is like receiving a traffic citation. You'll be fine. The most important thing is to let him sober up, then he's out of here. So what we try to do is, if they're not being combative, and uh, this is not combative, we'll release him from his restraints and uh, be done with that. Hey, bro. You with me? We're going to sit you down right over here, man. Come on. You know where you're at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn around, turn around right here. Have a seat right here, man. We're taking you out of the chair, okay? You're not gonna have to be tied up anymore, all right? Oh, no. All right, stay sitting right there. We're gonna have the nurse check you out, okay? A few hours ago, he was the life of the party. Now look at him. I work at the Stanislaus County Jail as a deputy. I am a classification officer. And with this jail being as small as it is, you know, I can deal with these inmates one-on-one -on -one and uh, pretty much know the story of that individual inmate. Basically, it's a balancing act. I mean, you gotta be the tough guy, and then at the same time, you gotta be that guy who can listen and, you know, maybe help out if you have to. What do you got? Uh, it's being booked for possession of control substance. 11377. Have a seat. Let's see, uh, what was it? What did you get? He was stopped for not wearing a seatbelt. No. What was the substance? Because he ran my license plate and he pulled up my son's picture when he'd been in the prison and he pulled up. I believe it was meth. Meth? Man, you're 66. You using yeah. meth? Huh, I don't use meth. What, what was it? They says you had meth. Yeah, it was in, the, in the, my car, my wife's car. So your wife uses meth? I don't think so. Uh, I think it was a guy that was in my car. <laughs> you were been there by yourself, so it was you. No, not about a minute before that. <laughs> All right. Man, you're too old for that, dude. You're supposed to have it already figured out by now. Go with him in there. Yeah, come on in here. That wasn't yours, huh? Mm -hmm. If you're such a good guy, why do you deal with people who are on that madness? Okay. What's that? What you see where it gets you, right? I mean, if it's not yours, look where it got you. Ain't funny. No, absolutely not. It's going to cost me more money than I can make in two years. <laughs> On Social Security. And you've never used in your life? No, I just never. I've done some diet pills in the old days. Do the arresting officer know you? Do you know you had to spend the license? He's new. They just, uh, He's new. No, he pulled up my son's seat. That's why he pulled me in. My son's been in the joint two or three times. Is he done? So what? Right through that doorway, please. This one? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. All righty. I'm going to look up his son and see what kind of history his son has. I'm just curious, because he said he's in and out of here and he's always in trouble. Here's one, possession for controlled substance, paraphernalia, parole violator, so he's in and out of the system, obviously. Possession of controlled substance, felon in possession of a firearm, possession of a controlled substance. You mentioned, uh, you, you, you mentioned, don't, 
during the stop that they uh, they punched your name up and your son came up. Does he have the same last, first name as yours? He's a junior. He's a junior? Okay. All right. That's all I need to know. And he's 44 he's still at home. <laughs> Here, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. Here's what I think. I think your son was in the car. I think he had it, and you know, I think you're taking a rap for it. I've done it before and for my, my son. Well, somebody got to do it. I mean, th that doesn't upset you at all? You know, that, yes. That you, you know, your son wouldn't step up? I'm a family man. I go to church and everything. Mm -hmm. And what other people do, I can't I have no control over, but I can try to save them. You know, I'm, I'm sick and my stomach, but... I ain't gonna let you know it. <laughs> Bad boy. All right. Well, oh, there you have it. He's uh, 66 years old. He gets pulled over. They find crystal meth in the car. He's telling me his son he has a history of drugs. I think maybe the son was in the car, had the drugs, and uh, he took one for his son. Parents do things when they love their kids. We got a four, please. William. Oh, there he is. Come on out, man. 10, 30, 40. What'd you say? 10, 30, 40. <laughs> Grab a seat in there, sir. All right. I'm not trying to get in your business, though, but what do you tell them when you get home? You know, you, you don't hold a grudge or anything? Oh, yeah. I might kick him out. I mean, to leave you hanging like that. It's time he gets out on his own anyway. Yeah. 40 something years old. <laughs> Has he ever you know, stepped up for you? Hell no. No? Do you think he still uses uh, meth? Nah, he's a weed smoker. He's a weed smoker? But, 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 I mean, if it's not your meth, aren't you curious to, know, to wonder you know, whose it is? I think I know. It was the guy I just dropped off right before he got arrested. Really? But you don't think it was your son's? I think my son wouldn't keep it that long. <laughs> he wouldn't keep it that long? Uh, he doesn't share. He doesn't share? Not with anybody. My gut feeling says it was his son, and uh, he's covering for him, and he's still covering for him. You know, it's kind of sad that his son will let him go that far. You know, this is a man who, who really loves his son, and uh, he's willing to take a, a felony drug charge for him. DRT is the tension response team, and we have a good team here. We depend on each other when it's crunch time, and we train for this. We train to turn it on and train to turn it off. And when we turn it on, we do it the right way and we get the job done. All right, uh, we're gonna conduct a shakedown. What we're looking for is drugs. We got a little tip that they dropped drugs off tonight. We don't know for sure if they did or not. But we want to take everybody out of the park. We're gonna strip search them, check everything good. We're going to send Leo in first and let him do the preliminary research, and then we'll come in as follows. Any questions? All right, let's go ahead and form it up. Okay. Right okay. now. 4J. We got that many on there. You're going to need one. <coughs> move out. We're going up to uh, 4A. We're going to do a complete uh, pause shake down. We're going to pull them out. We're going to do a strip search. Uh, each DRT going to post up at each door, make sure they don't flush or anything like that. Let's go, gentlemen. Give it up. Let's get it up. Put the gym and your clothes on. Do not flush the toilet. Let's go. Turn around, face cat wall. Put your hand behind your head. You fold up those towels later. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Tuck your elbows. Move, move. Let's go. Bag up. Bag up. Bring them out, all right? Down to the kitchen. One line. Let's go. Right now, we're going down to the, the dining room area where the inmates are being uh, kept right now. Um, they're pat searching them where they pat down on the clothes. And in the, the classroom area, they're stripping the uh, inmates to make sure that they don't have anything inside their underwear or their clothes. Now we're going to go turn some mattresses over, check some mattresses, pull some totes out. 
take some contraband. I'll go ahead and start at one sale and work all the way over. After the canine come in, we'll do an extensive search of that of the entire pod. Pulling the sheets off. Move the sheets around. Check the mattress. This was I had in either. Anything that doesn't come on commissary, they can't have it. I'm searching uh, the personal items right here. Um, make sure they're not stuffing anything in. And again, I'm going to search the deodorant bottle and recap it. Everything is searched when we do a, a sale search. The inmates are coming up with new ways every day to hide contraband. It's never the same story here, so they keep us on our toes and we have to stay on our toes. for contraband, but I found a shirt. Uh, this is an illegal weapon. Jack! Come here. This could be used to penetrate the skin and cut just like a knife. Yep. It'd be wrapped up with a uh, sheet so they can have a good grip on it or Sanjay, can you tell where that piece comes from? I don't know where that came from. It looked like cotton. I say off a cotton, it's but you know. It's a food cart. Food cart? Is that a food uh, cart? It looks like it. Them carts. From what? The, a handle or something? Yeah, yeah. one of them those braces. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and now interview the individuals who belong to number six sale. And if um, we get a confession out of one of them, if not, then we'll charge both of them with uh, possession of a weapon. I'm gonna go ahead and take it to the commander, have him take a look at it, and we'll interview those individuals. Came out of six cell. Yes. Yeah. It was laying right down the way he laid his head at. Right there. Was it tote right there by? Yeah, yeah soon, right where the door, right where he laid his head at. Yeah. It was right, right there. It looks like it may have came from the fence up in the gym area. We have a fence up there, and the inmates have been working the wires away from around, and I think it's one of the brackets that hold the wires into place. Did he file this down? When the song comes up tomorrow, we'll have somebody to go up there and check those fences and make sure we have all those brackets in place up there. That's what it looks like. Let's roll, let's roll, Doc. You take all day. Sit beside that. Your hands behind your hands. Have a seat down. Wanna tell me about that? Did you got a bottom bunk six there? That's where it was found there. I just moved to the bottom when I seen it there. You don't know nothing about this? Mm -hmm. Well, you will be charged with it because it's found under your bunk. Introducing a dangerous weapon to the jail, man. Are you aware of it? But it's not your. But it was up under your bunk. It's not mine. So your cellie put that up under your bunk? I don't know. It's under your bunk. In your personal items. Your child. Where you going? Piece of uh, shank that we found yesterday. See if we got any missing links. I think we found our spot right here because there's a big gap and a big opening right here. And that piece could have easily come from this spot right here. It's a break right here in the gate. And this right here could be peeled off in a matter of time. You know, they can come in and peel this off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna call Lieutenant Lomax and let him know that there is a big gap and a big hole in here, which this is not supposed to be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get maintenance up here uh, immediately. Pretty good job on that shakedown. There, those two individuals will be charged pretty good, but we didn't find what we set out to find. We got brief chief on what we did. I'm pretty sure he'll schedule another one. So keep your eyes and ears open. Another thing to keep in mind that you know we did a good job communicating with each other. When the inmates inside the cell, you make sure you stand by the door where the inmate is at, so they don't come out until they're told to do so. That way, we have control of the inmate from beginning to end. Ball and all, it was an outstanding job. 
You know, like Lou said, we didn't find what we wanted to, but we found something that possibly could have injured somebody else. So good job. That was real good job. Thank you. And the doors open up and they leave me outside And they hand me my clothes and the key to my ride Now the night hits my face and it brings me to life Oh Lord, now I'm out that jail tonight Another night in my street, another night in my hair Now I'm kicking and tripping without the cops on my chair Now my hands on the wheel and my fingers